Good afternoon, Jonathan. Good How afternoon, you do? Bob. I'm well, thank you. Uh, Jonathan Farrington, our tourism director. And uh, I've just been visiting a little bit and updating me on uh, the new Park Service reservation system. Uh, you want to tell me a little bit about that? How, how's it planned on working? And well, there isn't a, there hasn't been a formal release yet, but there has been conversations with the superintendent. Uh, she's indicated that there will be a reservation system this summer. Um, it's not due to COVID-19, but due to all the construction projects that are going on in the park. Well, you know, I've been thinking about this and from my perspective, it seems to me that the reservation system will reduce congestion and make the visitor experience maybe a little bit better. Your thoughts? Well, I think that there's ways to keep the visitor experience at a high level and not have congestion without a reservation system. Okay. Uh, you want to <laughs> elaborate a little bit on that? Well, yeah. And I, I guess, um, you know, I wouldn't want to, there to be a poor experience in the park for visitors. I also don't want there to be an unsafe situation, whether it's pandemic or created in some other way. But, you know, we've seen changes that have been taking place and implemented in the park, reducing commercial services over the last almost 40 years. And the promise was always if you move these commercial services out of the park, it would be the benefit of the gateways because businesses could then pick up um, and uh, take these different visitor needs on. But the question was always, well, if you move these services out of the park, isn't that going to potentially create congestion and more traffic in the park? And the answer in some ways is yes. And also there's been, uh, with the removal of those commercial services, uh, a massive amount of parking and areas that vehicles could distribute themselves throughout the park without having a congestion issue. But um, much of North and South Side Drive used to have parking that was along that 14 mile, mile loop and, and most of that's all been removed over the last 25 years. And that's just one example. There's a lot of things that could be done to reduce congestion without putting in a reservation system. Uh, the park shuttles was done away with last year it's going it's back in operation um yeah i mean those are limited and and i think you know in conversations even going back to the prior superintendent mike reynolds you know he stated that you know the park service gives a huge amount of money to yards and yards uh, the yosemite area transportation system is really very important to the region but you know with the limited resources they have they provide over I think $1.2 million to yards. If they had those additional resources, they could definitely improve and increase the size of the free shuttle fleet. And uh, they don't have those resources. So I think that's one of the things that's needed is a, a more robust transportation system throughout the valley and offering some charts, shuttles that go to Glacier Point and, and up even to uh, Mariposa Grove. To improve uh, the conditions and experience, these the people of Mariposa have been dealing with uh, <laughs> one disaster after another. Uh, the reservation system reduced visitation in the park. Um, what do you see uh, the implications of this system with respect to people in the county here? Yeah. Well. One, there hasn't been any public discourse, and I think that's one thing that we're disappointed with, is that we've had and heard many promises that any time any of these types of changes would be implemented, that the community would be involved. And we, you know, we live here. We have a lot of really good ideas and solutions that we could share in partnering with the Park Service to um, help ease, you know, things like congestion. So, um, we would just like to see more conversation about this situation and how we can engage to, to come up with solutions for it. Uh, You're going to edit that out. I don't know that I answered your question there. Uh, I th the 
I'm not going to edit anything out. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a candid conversation okay, between well. you and me. The um, the overall problem uh, of um, overcrowding in the park is is not just Yosemite, but other parks have instituted a um, a reservation system. Uh, is this a, a system-wide issue uh, that is uh, being introduced into Mariposa, uh, Yosemite, or is this uh, something you... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I think, you know, when I was born in the early 60s, there was 15 million people living in California. There's over 40 million now. You know, there's 8 billion people in the world. There will be we will need to create solutions on visitation. And I don't think that you can come up with one answer systemically for all the parks. They all require and have different needs and um, different solutions. But I think there needs to be a broad look at how to implement these because of the unintended consequences that take place. Something as simple as putting in a reservation system through recreation.gov that system doesn't allow most international travelers to make that reservation with their international credit card and transact on the system. Mm. So there's unintended consequences when you put something in and say, well, it's fair for everyone. Well, if we don't understand how people internationally travel, that 90% of the time book through a travel agent that books all the aspects of their travel, they're just simply not gonna come. They're gonna go to another destination. I mean, everybody, many people will say that Yosemite is a world heritage site, it's a world destination, people are going to come. If it's not convenient, if they're making decisions over San Francisco or Sonoma or Napa or Lake Tahoe or Joshua Tree, you know, they're going to choose the path of least resistance. So we need to work together with the Park Service in, in crafting these plans so we can say, well, what about this? You know, when we, when we change this... Right. What are the un unintended consequences that are going to happen in other places? I really appreciate you taking these few <laughs> minutes. And uh, I'm hoping folks out there, uh, this, this is on social media, and I'll be posting this on YouTube, <laughs> uncensored. Yeah, well, I would just... <laughs> and, and, and the feedback may be, uh, be uh, informative to both of us. Yeah, I'm not against a system. I mean, we're not. We just want to make sure that it's solution-oriented in the community, the people that live here in our region have the ability to, to provide input on it, whatever it might be. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Bob. We'll Bye, be everyone. We'll be talking. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.